to all who peruse these pages. The events contained within these papers may cause shock and awe. Readers may duck beneath their covers at mentions of cannibalistic crewmates, peek behind their fingers lest they read of eviscerated eyeballs, run screaming from words of deadly drownings, or drop their books in shock at violence too vicious to describe. Do you dare to proceed forward? Are you ready for the shocking events contained in this very book? Then prepare yourself to venture beyond the cover and embark upon the journey of the Aegolius. Epilogue. There are three long boats in the water. The sun shines overhead. These longboats are packed to the brim. Uh, they sit only a foot. The lip of the longboat sits only a foot above the water's surface. They are that full of crew and cargo. The three of you, Dr. Larkin Ridley, uh, Aspen Forsteri, and Darcy Winthrow are in one of these such longboats. The sun on your face feels like something that was a distant memory, something you hadn't felt in weeks, something I don't know if you expected to feel again. It came suddenly. As watches said the morning arrived, the sun did rise this time, unlike it has for weeks at this point. When it did so, or as at, at the time that it did, that ice field had receded slowly over the course of hours almost. It seemed to melt away, as did that spire holding up the Aegolius into the air. And so the longboats were sent out. As you rowed away, uh, you saw the Aegolius itself, uh, that steel icebreaker, uh, sink into the ocean due to the breach on its side. And I don't know if there was a happiness to see it go, maybe. Uh, Dr. Larkin Ridley, your legs are still injured and a dull, you have a dull headache, uh, but you are alive and, and the light almost pushes away any of those fears that were lingering in your mind, any of that humming in your mind. Uh, you don't see shadows and insects and anything. There's just a bit of deep water, which is in of itself terrifying, but not supernaturally so. Aspen for Steri, your abdomen has been patched up. Uh, your mind feels clearer now, especially with painkillers in your system, and you sit idly as the boats are rowed. And finally, Darcy Winthrow, you sit quietly thinking over that scene over in your head over and over and over again of shooting Liam in the back and watching him fall over that precipice into the ocean. But the sun is up and it is day. It is about midday at this point. It is not immediately after you've set out in the morning. And at this time of day, distant on the horizon, you would see a thin plume of smoke. That coming from some other ship in the local area. It seems to be far, far away, uh, headed straight towards your small cluster of three rowboats. Just tell me what's going through your characters' heads in, in the moments waiting, sitting here and waiting for that ship to arrive. I think I'm thinking about what it's going to be like when we do get back to the mainland because I, you know, I came on this ship hoping that I would have, you know, the reputation of having this cruise uh, help, you know, have that success. And it turned out to be a total disaster. And so I'm, I'm sort of wondering mm -hmm. what returning is going to look like. Okay. Is this boat crowded enough for me to be able to do like my own bidding? Your own bidding? Or to be able to, like, let's say, write on a book or something. Yes, you are able to sit here and write on a book. Okay. No one looks to you injured and uh, to row or do anything else. So you can okay. sit there and write if you'd like. Yeah. Um, I think mostly Aspen is thinking about... Uh, because this was not a success. They got no. up north, but not far enough. Mm -hmm. But this... But she wants to make sure that she remembers as much as possible. So mm -hmm. she's just going to add more stuff on her book um, or, or her notebook that she was writing on before uh, 
just so that she has memory of the happenings of the Agolius. Okay. And for you, Darcy? I think, like, I think Darcy's kind of, like, taking this time to kind of relax again. Like, Mm -hmm. jumping into the jumping into the water and then carrying someone for a long time kind of working mm-hmm. off of the adrenaline itself i'm 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 there i'm pretty sure that they would have like on like warm clothes again like mm-hmm. whatever dry stuff they had before yes like jumping onto the boat and everything um i think she's also kind of just tugging at the orange scarf that she has tied around the forearm and kind mm-hmm. of just thinking to herself that she didn't find what she was really looking for but she's not going to stop searching Mm -hmm. for it okay yes and i think an important note there is it is the sun is out but that does not mean it isn't late in the year far in the north Uh, so it is still chilling out you sit here for an hour while this ship approaches its large hull impressive it seems to be some sort of uh mercantile vessel although do what it's doing this far north you have no such clue Uh, as it pulls past you you see painted upon the side in a bright red uh, fresh coat of paint the perspective as it pulls up along and members of the crew high above start throwing ropes over preparing to get people up out of those boats. Ladders, rope ladders they throw over for people to begin climbing, uh, and actual ropes themselves attached to pulleys in order to hoist those rowboats up out of the water. This entire course of events takes the better part of two hours uh, as 80-some crew members in three large rowboats, overstuffed evidently, are rescued by this ship. You are assembled on the deck all together with some of the cargo that was scavenged, mostly personal belongings. And slowly, it seems officers aboard the ship are going through the crowd, taking down names. And I think that more than once you all hear your names repeated by adjacent crew members recounting the events, both in terms of the engine, fire, everything that occurred afterwards, your absence during the actual storming of the bridge when one of the crew members, Melvin, was shot and as well as the shipmaster Wright was stabbed. And after 30 minutes of waiting, uh, one of these officers dressed in uh, naval uh, blues seems to c- approach the group of you and will say, smoking a cigarette and taking a heavy draw, he will say, Would you mind if uh, the name's Officer Dawes, that's D A W W S, would you mind if I brought you up to private quarters and asked you a couple of questions we've got i've gotten your names from some of the other members of the crew uh another one of the officers going on doing some rounds will join us up there and we just wanted to flesh out some of the details that seem to be missing uh about what happened on the egolius uh if that's okay with you all some of the things we might be explaining to you uh, are, are slightly beyond normal understanding or imagining or perhaps even believing but I'd be happy to assist as long as I can. Uh, uh, I've been sailing a long time and heard a lot of tall tales. I can tell facts from fiction, don't you worry. Um, the, the, the two of you got them. You can uh, bring them up the stairs uh, and just follow close behind if that's all right. Yep. And they'll nod quickly to you, Darcy, Winthrow, and you, Aspen, and turn and head up uh, one of the external staircases up to. Uh, this is a tall ship, much larger than the Aegolius was, uh, up to something like the third uh, story of this bridge house uh, and into a private room. Not really waiting for the three of you to keep up, but you can slowly make your way up the stairs after them. Is there any sort of getting the story straight beforehand or conversation as you climb up these stairs? Um, I mean, we all saw what happened out there i think the main question would be like do we tell them everything that happened uh imagine we are on board with telling these folks the truth about 
the things we saw and the things we experienced, but if you're referring to what I imagine you are referring to, I'm sure a fall from a, a, a very tall height wouldn't be out of the realm of imagination. Yeah, really, apart from that, I don't think there's anything we need to hide. Hmm, okay. In that case, the three of you, uh, both of you, Aspen and you, Darcy, assisting Dr. Ridley uh, up these stairs can follow after Officer Dawes, and uh, you enter into that private room. You hear clanking from behind you as the other Officer Dawes had mentioned walks up the stairs uh, to come and get some answers to these questions that they might have, these holes in the story. And and so we see Officer Dawes, a, a kind of long-nosed, uh, short-haired man with like a, a closely, or some slight stubble, but nothing unruly. He looks to be a very like refined man. He seems to be standing here with a, a leather notebook when the other officer walks in. Uh, ben, what do they look like and what's their name? Uh, so this officer is dressed similarly to uh, Officer Dawes. Uh, they're slightly shorter. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've got their hair done up with a bun with their hat. Mm-hmm. So it looks mm-hmm. like they've just got some short hair. They are slightly pale. They've got some green eyes. Uh, and they are they are human. Mm-hmm. As is Dawes. Yeah. Yes. So um, And they approach uh, Officer Dawes. Good afternoon. Officer Dawes, sorry I'm late. Afternoon. I had to get myself a cup of coffee. Of course, of course. I just finished up <laughs> uh, there. So are these the three we're supposed yeah, to be questioning? Uh, these seem to be the three that uh, everyone was pointing us towards. Uh, I think uh, Krells is talking to the light keeper in some of, one of the other rooms, but uh, they should be able to get the stories. Uh, uh, okay. The three of you. This is my uh, associate, my fellow officer. Hello to all of you. My name is Officer Riker. That's with a Y. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Hello. Mm. We, I think we only had a couple of questions for you. Um, not many questions. Not many questions. No, no, not, not, not many answer, at all. You'll answer them nice and swift, and then you'll mm-hmm. be right on your way. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was your role? What were your roles on the Aegolius? Just for the record. Um, I didn't particularly have a role. Um, mm. I had joined as sort of a adventure um but i did help around the ship when given orders to help um but i didn't have a title or anything on the ship and what about the rest of you well everyone on the boat has a responsibility to take care of the boat so we were working to look at icebergs late at night um but i'm mostly there in order to see what really is way up north uh I am a professor at Bordeaux University, and I wanted to be able to hopefully write a book or two mm. about it. Um, but clearly, that is probably not going to work out. Um, all right, all right. But that is my purpose on the boat. Very well. Uh, and as for you? I'll give you a, a, a simple answer here. I was the ship's physician. Ah, oh, very well. Simple, simple. Sweet and short, just like how I like my coffee. You want uh, your coffee to be short, <laughs> just a, a small quantity of it. Espresso. Espresso, uh, yes, yeah, a f- uh, nice uh, new novelty. Have you tried it? Uh, no, I, I have not had the pleasure to. Okay. Uh, Perks can, it right up. We can manage to get you a cup uh, sometime after this, uh, Doctor. Uh, Anyways, we're getting we're getting off topic a little getting bit. Getting off topic, but it's, it's never too bad to have a bit of rapport with people. Uh, we're not trying to interrogate you here. We're just trying to get the story straight. Uh, so you should feel comfortable talking to us as well. We were told that the ship ran into an ice flow and uh, one of the engines, uh, two of the engines caught a flame. Uh, is that correct? Uh, yeah, yes. that, that was the the big crash that we had gone through. Okay. Had set some of the stuff on fire. And and, and the, the crash was so bad that the ship uh, was a beyond repairable state and thus was abandoned. Uh, that was that was the the idea. Although they did claim they had sent previous telegrams out, we were uncertain as to the veracity of that claim. Mm-hmm. Uh, Officer Dawes looks over at, you, at Officer Riker and has like a bit of a look, like a knowing kind of look, and will continue and say, "We did receive 
telegram communications from the Egolius uh, during the crash or immediately following it, I would assume. Uh, there was two communiques sent out. Uh, the first said, uh, I don't feel comfortable uh, repeating the messages. Uh, they, they, they contain some uh, uh, troubling uh, kind of things, things that shouldn't be sent over telegraph, uh, telegram. But uh, Very troubling indeed. Very troubling. Uh, the point being they were warnings to stay away from the location of the Egolius. Uh, and it wasn't until hours later that we received any communiques that were an SOS. So my question is, um, do you know why that might have been? Uh, um, I was the one. I was the one who sent the SOS. I mm-hmm. do not know who sent you the messages about staying away. But a curious thing was when we were trying to fight the fire, what the sprinkler that was supposed to be working to prevent. Mm-hmm the fire from spreading was not working so i'm not sure if that is any information that you're interested in it's quite valuable there might have been some sabotage there because um i was helping a fellow crewmate um move some explosives that we had on the ship and the door was unlocked to the room where they had the only key and one of the plugs on the black powder was opened very well one of the uh, boilers I- exploded as well on, on the very first day before we even set sail there were problems with the boilers i had to treat a patient whatever was occurring it was a, a regular and ongoing attempt to sabotage the crew of this vessel do you believe uh with a reasonable conviction that there is a saboteur uh amongst the crew of the Agolius? amongst the living crew specifically yes when we confronted a a certain individual aboard the ship there was some sort of reference made to the fact that that individual was working with others and uh, one of those we believed to be the captain and without understanding Mm -hmm. what the captain was really up to uh, we understood that to be the truth and now knowing that was no longer the case it is at least my belief that there are at least two other individuals on the ship who have some sort of interest in sabotaging it. Uh, it's worrying. So based upon that information, you believe the co-conspirators with the captain mm-hmm. are still alive and amongst the remaining crew here? Not with correct? the captain, uh, but with a certain, uh, a certain Keeper Devon. Mm-hmm. Mm. Eh. It's a bit worrying, if, if, if you ask me. Uh, I assume Vivian, Keeper Vivian, will know a bit about that, but... Do you know what came to be of uh, Keeper Devon? Uh, no. Not the slattest. He was not amongst the crew that were rescued. Uh, we did not. We haven't seen Keeper Devon. Very well. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and then my final questions are, do you know anything about the state of the captain we heard from a couple of the other crew members that he was ill for the last couple of weeks of the voyage uh and had not been seen there was rumors that he injured a crew member uh do you know if that is a true fact and do you know anything further about his state at the time of the crash i don't think darcy says anything but i think she does kind of glance over to um to dr ridley Mm -hmm. uh the 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 captain uh unfortunately was was murdered and the person responsible for that that death fell to his own demise uh we witnessed it ourselves well uh that's uh certainly a surprise uh so did you witness the death of the captain uh i i hate to pry at uh troubling memories here but the details will be important once this ship uh, reaches land once more and we have to turn our story over and 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 recount the the logs of what occurred on the ship so if you do know information about how the captain met his end or the how he was at the time uh, because there is just a a tinge of curiosity about uh why the captain was uh not at his post why those telegrams were sent in that manner. Uh, you understand this line of questioning, I would assume. Um, so if you, if you know anything more about what was happening with the captain, uh, I would implore you to um, 
tell us. The more information, the better. Of course. From, the more information, the better. From uh, the point of the crash, uh, before that, we I didn't personally notice anything odd about the mm -hmm. captain. We were told, you know, do your business, do what you're told, don't bother the captain. And from the point of the crash, it didn't seem like the captain was well in the head. I happen to believe that he might have been the one sending those telegrams mm. um we were present in the in the death of the captain and at that point it was very clear that he was going to hurt the people on the boat was it the uh isolation do you think that did it to him or was it something prior to setting off did he even show any signs of mm -hmm. illness or anything mm -hmm. before he even mm -hmm. set, set sail? Yes. His reasoning for coming aboard the ship in the first place uh, appeared to indicate some kind of single-minded obsession with finding some kind of creature in the depths below. That's at least what he told us before he was murdered. Uh, do you know anything more about that? Some creature in the depths? From our understanding of what the Egolius was, uh, from just... Uh, contacting the, sh the, sh the, sh the, the mainland, uh, it was an Arctic expedition, not one set out to find some creature or some uh, sea monster. Uh, so, so, so do you have any more information on that by, by chance, Doctor? Or, or you, Professor? I'm going to look at prof uh, Dr. Larkin and Darcy. If, like, should I say the nefarious, like, really weird things. Sort of eye yeah. communication. Uh, uh, Aspen makes eye contact with both of you. Uh, these kind of questioning, is this the right time to say this kind of eyes. I give her a nod. I nod as well. So before you brought us up here, mm -hmm. Professor Larkin here said that there were... Dr. Larkin. Thing or, sorry, no, I I'm Dr. no professor, Lark but thank you. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Dr. Larkin here said that there were things that happened that you may not believe because mm -hmm. it's very out there. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it's been pretty straightforward so far, so uh, I, I assume we're about to get into that. For multiple times during our during the expedition, there were there was humming and voices that people were hearing telling them to come into the water telling them to mm. to come to them and they will get their heart's desires or wishes to stay with them and stay in the water with them and we went through it and it seemed like it was the same thing that was controlling or influencing the captain hmm. officer dawes makes suspicious eye contact with Officer Riker, almost like a, a quizzical look is shared. What do you make of this, Dawes? Uh, so are you telling me that you heard that as well? Like this was a common thing. If we ask other members of the crew about this, they'll, they'll also tell us that this is what they heard. Because uh, you told me to believe you, but uh, if you're telling me that uh, you heard some sort of siren song and that's what caused the captain to send a do not come kind of signal to us uh, and then crash the ship, that's seems a, little, a bit far-fetched. Seems a little far-fetched, yeah. Yeah. The other crew members can, can vouch for the, the glowing icebergs we encountered. I, I, I cannot say how many of them heard the song as well, but I can at least say that the three of us have. If you ask uh, uh, Mr. Brat Gallant, uh, who was aboard with us when we spotted the first mm -hmm. icebergs, uh, you'll probably hear a very similar tale. Hmm. I'll, we'll make note to go talk to him. Okay. Uh, and then a final question, I suppose. And Dawes makes quick eye contact with you, Riker, and will say, how many weeks was it since you left port? Just to get the timeline straight. Um, We've been hearing a similar number from everyone, but I just just wanted to check. It's been six weeks. Six, was it not? Six weeks. six weeks, give or take a couple of days. Okay. Hmm. Dawes makes quick eye contact with you again, Riker, uh -huh, and nods their head. You see them, uh, the three of you see Dawes make a very quick note and will say, uh, very well. 
Uh, that's it for my questions. Rika, did you have anything else that you needed to get clarification on? I think we heard everything that we can get. I think that's about it. I would thank the I think we should you. go. I think we should go search for Bright Gallant next. Yeah, we'll go talk to Bright uh, and, and see if he can uh, validate some of the things you told us. Tell us the same things. I, I don't assume you'll be uh, lying to us, but um, it's always good to double check these kind of things. I would thank you three of you for your time. Uh, if you did want to get some coffee or an espresso, uh, there's a, a mess hall just down the road. Uh, down the road, down the hallway. My apologies. It's been a long night. <laughs> uh, at, I, I hope you're all well. Uh, and you can get some good rest tonight. Uh, Rika and Dawes will kind of like nod their head as if to come back in the hallway with them. It was six weeks, right? Uh, it should have been was... if, if, if I, I was keeping track correctly. Because... Just the way they asked the question, what did the others say? Maybe we should ask someone? It doesn't seem like they were on our side. No, I, I understand the fantastical nature of, uh, of everything we were telling them, but they seemed mighty skeptical. Uh, maybe it mm -hmm. wouldn't hurt to ask around. I mean, they saw the, like, the ice tower and everything like that. When the ship showed up, the ice tower like, melted as the ice, but like the, the crew, crew all saw it, yeah. Yeah, like the like the crew must have told him about like the giant ice thing, right? That uh, like, that must have happened. Why don't we ask around about how long we were at sea? I, I do not understand why it would be any different than what we said, but it was it was a very strange question. And yeah, something doesn't feel right. As the three of you have that conversation, the camera shifts and we see the officers Dawes and Riker walking in the hallway towards that mess hall. And Dawes quietly will say, uh, I'll go find that bright gallant fellow they was talking about. But um, I'm starting to think that we might have to get called the psychiatry uh, wards, uh, get some trucks out for when we arrive back at port. I, I, I think you're right. Sirens, I, I don't siren understand songs, how people glow siren icebergs. songs, tall tales, glowing icebergs. I don't understand how a, a ship lost for three years at sea. Everyone's reporting uh, six weeks, and they all look famished, starving to death. Uh, I think there was something going wrong on that ship. Uh, some illness spreading around. Doesn't make any a, sense. Some sort of mind rot. Uh, we should probably maybe be a bit careful talking to them. I don't know if it's a, something contagious or in the air, so, so the drinking water or something like I'll, that. I'll, um, I'll make sure the other officers know. Just to be careful. Mm -hmm. Make sure, make sure they're not eating any of our food. Just, in, just, in, just in case that's how it can uh, s spread around. Um, but I'll go find uh, Bright Gallant and uh, see if he tells us the same thing. All right, I'll meet up with you later. And the two officers split. Um, and the 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 prospective sails along back towards the mainland. Uh, the officers going around collecting more stories from the crew members, getting the full story together. And then a man with a shaggy brown beard closes his book. <sighs> Faramel lets out a deep sigh. The snow still comes down around him in this open kind of cavern workshop and he'll look forwards kind of with a frown on his face and say, uh, did you hear any of that? Can you hear me at all? Are you awake yet? And he'll like kick at something that you don't see with his foot. It makes a kind of glassy tink sound. And he sighs again. And we'll go, I really wish you were more talkative company. And get up and walk back over and put his book on the shelf. Uh, leaving some large piece of ice lying on a chair in the corner of his workshop alone as he goes back to his business. And that's the end of Weenie Hollow this year. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please leave a rating and review on our Apple podcasts. That's very appreciative, or we'd really appreciate that kind of stuff. You can follow us on social media at Trials and Trebs on Instagram and Twitter uh, for teasers, art, uh, posts of the like. Uh, if you make art uh, and want us to see it, you can send it to us on there. We love seeing things that people make. Um, we have a Discord server. You can find the link to join it in the, the description. I'm sure you'll find some people chatting about these episodes. Uh, and then, of course, we have a Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash trials and trebs. If you want to throw a couple of dollars our way, we are very appreciative of that as well uh this podcast takes a bit of energy to produce especially something like this uh <laughs> it's a lot of fun to make it but it takes a bit of time and uh if you enjoy it we would appreciate uh 
if you enjoyed it and can afford to do so, we would appreciate some uh, financial support. From I'm you. asking if we played for 10 hours for this one. Probably. We've been um, playing for six weeks. Oh my <laughs> gosh, for a three long time. years. Yes. <laughs> um, anyways, I hope you'll all tune in next week for some regular trials and traps. Back to your I regularly you scheduled it. program. Yeah. Uh, anyways, have a good Wee. Halloween. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good spooky night. Spooky. Good night. Ooh. Ooh. Happy it Halloween. was three years. Oh no, a bat. <laughs> <laughs>